Morning. 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 Nice to see all of you here today. Uh, welcome to God's house for worship. <laughs> Some of them are still filing in. Um, our, our worship service today reminds us of the faithfulness of God. If you look back throughout the history, and if you only notice one thing, you'll see that God is faithful. God's love is everlasting. God's love is constant. And it's that love, that faithful love, that allows us to, uh, to resist those, those temptations of sin. It, it's that, that love that drove God to the cross that gives us the strength to be able to fight our battles against sin each and every day. It's that faithful love that, that we celebrate and cherish today and always. Uh, we'll begin with our opening hymn, Every Morning Mercies New. May God bless our worship here today. worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice. For the evil I have done, and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you. Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us that we may live for you. Amen. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Since Christ has full atonement made and brought to us salvation, each Christian therefore may be glad and build on this foundation. Your grace alone, dear Lord, I plead, your death is now my life indeed, for you have paid my ransom. A blessing on earth, thanks and praise to Father, Son, and Spirit, the God who saved us by his grace, a glory to his merit. O triune God in heaven above, you have revealed your saving love, your blessed Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you reveal your mighty power chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace that we may obtain your promises and become partakers of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is taken from Exodus chapter 16, beginning with the second verse. If history has shown us anything, it shows us that God is faithful, but his children are not always faithful. Uh, we see the discontentment, the grumbling of the children of Israel in our first lesson for today. But we also see the faithful love of God, which provided for them not only their deliverance from Egypt, but also food in the desert. Moses records for us, In the desert the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat, and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumblings against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you your meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, 
It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. This is God's word. We join in reciting the verses of our psalm of the day responsibly, Psalm 145. Great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is near to all who call on him. He hears their cry and saves them. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. This is the word of our God. Our second lesson is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians chapter 10. This will serve as the basis for our sermon later on. Paul writes, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. They drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock is Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. This is God's word. We join in singing our verse of the day, Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? I'll sing it through the first time, and I invite you to sing through joining on the second. stand for the words of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Gospel according to John chapter 6. Glory be to you, O Lord. In this section of scripture, Jesus once again refers to himself as the bread of life, the faithful, enduring word of God, which continues to feed the souls of thousands throughout every generation. 
Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boat and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe in you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they asked, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to you, you, O Christ. You may be seated, and the children may come forward for the children's message. seen one of these things before? Yep, I did. Yeah? You seen one of these before, Maddie? No? I've seen no? one of these before. You've seen one of these? Yeah, this is called a food pyramid. It tries to teach us what we're supposed to eat and how much we're supposed to eat. What do you see at the very top? What does that look like? A sack. What is that? What by sack? Is that? What is that? What's that look like? A lollipop. A lollipop, yeah. You notice that's the smallest triangle. We don't eat a whole lot of lollipops. Did you guys have just a breakfast of lollipops today? I did. You did? Oh, okay. <laughs> My sister, too. Your sister did, too, yeah. <laughs> just lollipops for breakfast. Yeah. We don't eat lollipops or ice cream for a whole meal. Those, those are treats. What else we got here? What else do you see? A Yeah. You see, you see a glass of milk? What's that look like? Food. Yeah, that's food. What kind of food is that? What does that look like? Does that look like anything? Does that look like any kind of food? I do. Some chicken, some meat. It looks like some chicken and meat. And what about these things? What are these? Green apple. Yeah, there's an apple right there. There's a leaf of lettuce. You got your fruits and your veggies. What about this last one? Bread. Yeah. Bread, yeah. You need a lot of bread uh, yeah. in, in order to have a healthy diet. That's what the that's what the, the doctors tell us. You know what? Jesus calls himself in our lesson, the one I just read, he calls himself the bread of life. And he says that whoever eats or drinks from him will never go hungry or thirsty again. Jesus doesn't just feed our tummies. He doesn't just feed our tummies. He's done something even better than that. He feeds our faith. And he does that when we come to hear him in his word. When we come to church to listen to the Bible. When we come and sit in Sunday school. We hear his word read and he feeds us himself. Feeds us with that news that he's paid for how many of our sins? How many sins has Jesus paid for? How many? One? Two? Three? More than that? Four. More than four? All of them. He's paid for all our sins. He feeds our faith with the most important thing that we need, the news of our forgiveness, that he died on the cross to pay for all those sins we for. And so we get to go to heaven and to celebrate that feast with him forever. Okay? Jesus has paid for every single one of your sins. He's fed your faith. That's awesome. Let's 
hold our hands and pray. Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for washing me with the waters of my baptism. Thank you for feeding my faith with your word. Continue to make me strong in my faith. Continue to guide me and direct me until you bring me to be with you and my home with you in heaven. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Good job, you guys. You can go sit back down, okay? And we'll continue with our hymn of the day, O Christ, who called the twelve. and peace. Yours in abundance through Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. Amen. The words for our consideration are taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians chapter 10. Please bow your heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, when you are going through school, or maybe as you're going through school right now, what was the subject that you liked the least, or like the least? Anybody? Yeah. English. Oh, English is such a, a difficult language, isn't it? All the, all the rules of grammar just get thrown out the window. You need to say something like Latin, right, Andrew? Get ready for it. It's coming. Yeah. English. What did you say? Math. Math. Oh. Trigonometry. Geometry. Oof. 
Stephen, her son's this easy. Yeah. What else did you like? Jim. I'm here to learn, not to sweat. Come on, you know. Sure. What else? Chemistry. chemistry. Any other kind of science, too? I couldn't stand, you know, chemistry or uh, physics or biology. Ugh. Yeah. Anybody else? My, my, the one I, I, I liked the least was history. I couldn't stand history. It was so boring, so dry. It, it seemed like every time you got done with the class period, it was like, so what? Who cares? As I got older, I started to appreciate studying history a little bit more. I, I love learning history now. Uh, one thing that if you look back on history, especially if you look at the biblical history, one thing that you see is true, is that God is faithful. God is love is always faithful and constant. It's, he always provides for his people. Can you think of any examples in the Bible of how God showed his faithful love to his children in the scriptures? What do you think? Think of a couple of them. God never was faithful. He, he never looked after his people. Never provided for them, ever, at all. What do you got? Fed them. Fed them. We just heard it in our first lesson, didn't we? You know, filled their camp with quail, gave them bread from heaven. What else? Sets us the Savior. Okay, you're jumping to the really <laughs> good one. That's a good one that you know. Yep. He kept true, but he, he kept true to his promise, right? Came through with the Savior for the world. What other ones? He didn't just kill Adam and Eve. He didn't just wipe out Adam and Eve and start over. He gave them the gospel promise that a Savior would come. Continued to look after their line. Continued to provide them with children. Sure. What else? Oh, yeah. Help them win battles. Oh, man. All the different battles that you can think of. What about, like, Gideon? You know, Gideon taking 300 soldiers in, in, against an impossible number for the enemy, and, and yet not one man was lost in Israelite's camp. Or, or, or think about Jericho. What happened when the people marched around the city of Jericho? The walls came tumbling down. And did they use battering rams to knock it down? Trumpets, and they shouted. God delivered them into their hands. Or, or what about when the sun stood still for Joshua? against the Amalekites and God made sure that they'd be able to win that battle, that victory. Mo Moses being able to part the Red Sea to get away from Pharaoh's army. Being guided through the wilderness with that, that smoke during the day and that pillar of fire at night. God was faithful to his people. His love was always constant. He always looked after them. And that's really what Paul gets into in the first Part of our lesson for today. He reminds the Corinthians of the faithfulness that God had shown to his people. He says, our forefathers were all under the cloud, that would be the cloud he led them through the wilderness with, and they all passed through the sea, being the Red Sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud in the sea, and they all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Anybody remember what that rock might be referring to? Remember when Moses was at Kadesh? He took his staff and cracked it, and all of a sudden water started gushing out of this rock and quenched the people's thirst. God always provided for these people. He was always faithful, always with them. Now wouldn't you think... If you were able to be an eyewitness to see Moses parting the Red Sea, or see your camp cluttered with quail, or be able to see the, the sun never go down so that, 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 that your, your army could win the battle, wouldn't you think if you were an eyewitness of one of those miracles, you'd stay with the Lord forever? You'd remain faithful with him till the day you died. That you'd, you'd run from sin every time it reared its ugly head and cling to the Lord. Wouldn't you think that you'd do that? That wasn't the case. 
wasn't the case for many in Israel. Many people had witnessed, had experienced, had, had felt God's amazing faithfulness and love. And yet, what do we see throughout their history? Like a broken record, they continued to throw themselves into the arms of heathen women and give their hearts to false idols over and over and over again. History shows us a couple of things. One, God is faithful, but two, God's people are sometimes faithless. Because of their disobedience, because of their faithlessness, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered over the desert. The Apostle Paul was very thankful with the way God was blessing that little congregation in Corinth. He saw that the gospel was being preached. People were coming to faith. Many were enjoying and basking in the sunshine of God's grace. But he also saw some striking similarities between those Israelites and those Corinthians. He saw that those Corinthians were struggling with stumbling back into their old way of life, stumbling back into that old heathen lifestyle. They had that struggle with idolatry, struggling with worshiping false gods. Paul sees them and he, he sees the way God punished the Israelites in the, in the past and he, he wants to try and warn them. He wants to ring the siren and let them know, stop doing what you're doing. Hold true to the faith. Cling to Christ. So what can he say? What does he say? He points them to the examples of history. He says, brothers, I don't want you to be ignorant about the fact that there were other people who are just like you. People who walked with God, people who loved God, people who knew and experienced God's grace, and yet even they walked away from him. Even they abandoned God and were punished. He says these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us. If you've done any sort of study of history, you probably know that it isn't uncommon for an ancient civilization or even some modern civilizations to kind of erase or not write in their shortcomings and their failures. You know, kings always wanted to be known for the great things they'd done, not the, the battles that they lost. So they leave some of their history out. But not so with God's people. Not so with the scriptures. Everything was recorded. The good and the bad. Sure, we see Abraham, this model example of faith. Abraham, who trusted the Lord, left his family, his homeland, and, and took off for the wilderness when he was near retirement age. He followed God blindly. What a marvelous faith. But we also see Abraham abandoning his relationship with his wife, lying about who Sarah was to try and save his own skin. We see Abram's faithlessness. Sure, we see Moses, you know, being so brave, so courageous, squaring off with Pharaoh. But we also see Moses cowering in the corner, trying to pass the buck of responsibility when God told him he wanted him to lead his people. You see David, a man after the Lord's own heart, a man who, who trusted that God would protect him and keep him safe as he went over Goliath and just towered over him. But we also see David, the adulterer, David the murderer. If history shows us anything, even God's people stumble in their faith. God's people are punished because of their faithlessness. These things happen to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us. The same is true for all of us here as we gather around God's word. To look at these examples of the past and ask ourselves, what can we learn from them? If history has shown us anything, just one example. If history has shown us anything in our church body, when a pastor resigns from the ministry, almost all of the men have two things in common. One, 
He stopped going to conference and circuit meetings, meeting with the other brothers in the ministry. And two, he stopped having a personal devotional life. Now, I, I teach a lot of Bible classes. I, I do a lot of sermon studies. A lot of pastors do that, but not having a personal, just this is my time with God in prayer. Those are, are, are known to all of our church, our, 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 the pastors in our church body. They serve as a strong warning and encouragement. Make sure you're getting together with the brothers. Make sure you're studying God's word on your own. It's a warning and an encouragement. If history's shown us anything, you know, when somebody leaves our, one of our congregations, well, a warning sign is that they've stopped coming around for worship. They've stopped sitting around and, and, and listening to the word. If history shows us anything, a, a, when a marriage is torn apart by divorce, that couple has stopped praying for, praying with each other, hasn't been spending time in the Word together. If history shown me anything in my personal record, when I'm struggling with sin, boy, my personal devotional life is a mess. And I haven't found myself on my knees praying to God for help as I struggle through my life of sin. We see example after example in the Bible of people who walked with God, who loved God, who had faith in God. We see example after example of people who sat with us in the pews proclaiming the, the precious joy of the gospel, who, who, who came to our font and were baptized, who stood next to us at the Lord's Supper. We see example after example of people who have kept the faith but then lost it. They've walked away. History has shown us that, that it's not once saved, always saved, that it's possible to lose that precious gift of heaven. But we're here today, right? That's not me. If all others desert you, Lord, I never will. That's why we're here, right? To cling to Christ, because that will never, ever happen to me. But God has a warning for those who have that feeling in our hearts. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Will we be so smug, so arrogant to think it's never going to be possible for me to fall away from my faith? But what makes us any different? What makes us any different from those people in the past? What makes us any different? What makes us any so special? Think about that. There were millions of people who were eyewitnesses to watch the Red Sea part. Millions of people who saw manna form on the ground and saw their camp cluttered with quail. Millions of people who saw Pharaoh bow down to Moses and let the people go. There were thousands in the crowd who saw Jesus feed them with a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. There were many who saw him turn water into wine. There were a number of people who saw him raise the dead and heal the sick. There was even one who was with him every single step for three years of his ministry. And yet, even he fell from the faith. What makes us so special to think that it could never happen to me. Will I be really that, that proud? That arrogant? To think that I'm so good? No, with a humble and penitent heart, I find myself once again crawling and clinging to the cross of Christ. And there, thanks be to God, I see the open arms of my Savior, his, his pierced hands and feet welcoming me and assuring me that his blood has paid for all of my shortcomings and failures. There I see my Jesus promising me that his blood has washed away every single one of my sins. Here I see Jesus who tells me he will hold on to me until the day I die. Here I see Jesus giving me the shield I need against temptation. 
against the temptation of idolatry and adultery, of pride and arrogance, or whatever it is that you're struggling with. There Jesus is as we cling to his cross. There we see God who is faithful. The devil uses the same sins that he's used in the past. He hasn't tried anything new. He's not that creative. Paul says, No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. Many others have faced whatever struggle it is you're going through right now. And you know what? It isn't impossible. They've overcome it. But not because their faith was so great. Not because they were so strong. But because God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Think about that. God will always provide a way out. When you hear Satan's sirens calling your sinful flesh, God provides a way out. Whether it be a prayer, whether it be a Bible passage that comes to mind or, or something that reminds you of Jesus, God empowers your faith to stand firm, to hold fast, to say yes to the Lord and no to sin. We see example after example in Scripture of people who have done just that. We see Noah refusing to conform to the sinful world that was all around him. We see Joseph running away from Potiphar's wife's invitation. We see Joshua trusting in the Lord and leading those people into the promised land. Best of all, we see Jesus Christ obeying his Father's will, denying Satan's temptations, and living his life perfectly for us. Remain in him, and he will remain in you. But the only way we do that is when we're here with him in his word, when we're in our homes in his word, and we're with our families around our dinner tables in his word. Cling to Christ. And there you'll see forgiveness for when you fail. There you'll see strength to overcome Satan's temptations. Cling to Christ. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in our confession of faith found on page 11 in our worship folder. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God created me and all that exists, that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind, and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all that I own, and all I need to keep my body in life. God also preserves me by defending me against all dangers, guarding and protecting me from all sin. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise, to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Please be seated. This time our ushers will be handing out our friendship registers. Please be sure to fill those out to mark your visit here with us today. Also, those of you who are joining us online, please be sure to sign our online guest book. After that, we have the opportunity to bring our offerings of thanks to our faithful God.
Please stand for the offering hymn and prayer. blessing and gift. Strengthen your church in all the world. Let your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. Use our ministries and offerings to extend your healing and your hope. Allow us to be faithful witnesses of your faithfulness throughout history, the faithfulness which showed itself when you sent us, our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne with prayers of thanks, along with the Englander family as they celebrate Bob's birthday this week, and also as Bob and Sarah celebrate 38 years of marriage. We thank you for bringing Bob and Sarah both to faith and allowing them to grow in their baptismal grace, and leading them to each other and leading them to you. We ask that you continue to bless them in their marriage as they continue to grow in their faith and understanding and marvel at the faithfulness that you've shown to them throughout the years. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we also come before you on, on behalf of our brothers and sisters at Trinity in Mount Vernon, Washington, uh, whose uh, their, their church was burned by arson this past week. We ask, Lord, that, uh, that you would continue to uh, give our brothers and sisters strength and hope, um, and, and uh, we pray that they find a place to uh, continue to worship. And though uh, those steeples and, and, and church buildings may fall, Lord, your word never will. And, and, and nor will the, the, the love of your people's word as they continue to celebrate with joy uh, what no one can take from them, the good news of the gospel. Uh, we ask, Lord, also that you watch over all of our college students as they start a new year. Uh, please continue to keep them grounded in their faith and give them guidance by your word. Uh, let them know that, that they have a, their brothers and sisters here who are always thinking about them, always praying for them, and, and who wants to do whatever they can uh, to lead them and, and guide them with your word as you guide them to your home with them in heaven. We ask, Lord, also that you watch over Andrew Luck as he heads to Luther Prep this upcoming uh, week. Please bless Andrew's uh, year, years of study at, at Luther Prep as he continues to uh, consider whether or not he can serve you in the full-time public ministry. Uh, allow that time uh, of encouragement and, uh, at Luther Prep to be a blessing to Andrew. Bless his teachers and, and the students that he'll be going to school with as, as they continue to encourage the faith which, which you have planted in his heart. We ask also, Lord, that you hear us as we bring you our private petitions in silent prayer. Grant these requests and all others that we bring to you in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. Oh, may the good Lord be with you. Let us praise him, alleluia, with hearts uplifted, thank the Lord. We lift them up, be God adored. Let us praise him, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has called us to be his own so that we may live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. With seraphim flying, their glad anthems crying, the heaven and earth show God's glory upright. How holy, how holy, repeated how holy, the Lord God of hosts, God of power and might, God's children. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Your only son, no sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty son and to become the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb. be seated and come forward at the direction of our ushers. Take an eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink. 
This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given to you on the cross for all of your sins. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you, keep you in the true faith until life Body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given into death for you. Forgiveness of all your sins. Take a drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shed on the cross. For the remission of all of your sins. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given and shed on the cross for you for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. sins. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for you, for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Heart in peace, your sins are forgiven. Amen.
and Savior, Jesus Christ, given it to death for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given it to death for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for you, for the remission of all of your sins. Take a drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given and shed on the cross for you, for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. stand for prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and to drink in this sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive with believing hearts the faithful blessing of our Lord God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated, please, for our closing hymn.